valvetime.net. Hi, and welcome to a special Valentine's Day edition of Valve Time Top 5, which will also be known as Episode 7 on every other day of the year. As we know, Valentine's Day is a very special day, which we humans use to show our admiration for a loved one by buying expensive commercial goods and falling for cheap discounts. Most importantly, though, it's about relationships and spending money. To mark the yearly celebration of love, we thought now would be the perfect time to take a look at some of Valve's greatest relationships, but since Valve doesn't really have all that many lovey-dovey relationships, we thought we would express our bitterness as a bunch of single male nerds by expanding the term to also include friendships and rivalries, which Valve games definitely have in excess. Now, this intro has gone on long enough, so let's stop making fun of an annual holiday and get on with the show. As usual, this episode will feature multiple spoilers for several of Valve's series. Let's get started. Number 5. Our fifth choice for this list might surprise a lot of you given the extremely limited exposure provided during Half-Life 2. What could it be, I hear you ponder? Well, our number 5 slot goes to none other than the decades-old rivalry displayed by Eli Vance and Wallace Breen. Given Breen's demise during the conclusion of Half-Life 2, this relationship is only really touched upon at several rather minor intervals, including during Breen's Overwatch speech at Nova Prospect, and during a direct confrontation atop the Combine Citadel. The rivalry is shown to be long-standing and bitter, as the pair intellectually square off against one another in an attempt to sway the other strong juxtaposing beliefs regarding the Combine's dominance over Earth. With Eli having stood as one of Black Mesa's top scientists and Breen as its administrator, the pair clearly have a long and varied history together. But that doesn't stop Breen from celebrating Eli's capture of Black Mesa East and his near death at the hands of a Combine portal. Anyway, as interesting and insightful as the pair's bickering is, the limited exposure we have to their rivalry as players really is the largest problem with this relationship, preventing us from putting it any higher on our list, or lower depending on how you look at it. Number 4. A similar tale could be told for our fourth choice, which is also only really shown or established in brief circumstances. However, this time we're talking about a loving relationship, rather than a bitter rivalry. That's right, we're talking about the growing close relationship between Alex Vance and Gordon Freeman, which begins late in Half-Life 2 and continues to grow throughout episodes 1 and 2 as the pair support each other through thick, thin, life, and death, literally. The relationship develops relatively quickly over the period of a few hectic days after Alex seemingly falls for Gordon after her rescue inside Breen's office. Not that Gordon actually had all that much to do with the rescue, now that we think about it. Anyway, their bond continues to subtly strengthen throughout episodes 1 and 2 before eventually receiving an unmistakable wink of approval from Eli at White Forest. However, while we'd like to sit here commentating on all of the innuendo and... Ugh, physical contact, we still feel the relationship is a little too one-dimensional for our liking. Don't get us wrong, keeping Gordon as a silent protagonist throughout the series is and was absolutely the way to go, it just isn't a very good way of developing what should be a two-way relationship. Better luck next time, Gordon. Number 3. Our next choice might weird out a few people, but don't forget we said we were also allowed to talk about friendships, rivalries, and that includes platonic relationships. Yes, we're going to talk about everyone's favorite class-on-class -class friendship displayed between the Heavy's Weapon Guy and the Medic from Team Fortress 2. While the close relationship between Alex and Gordon was entirely scripted and established by Valve as a primary pillar within the main narrative, the Heavy and Medic's relationship was almost entirely developed by the community after noticing how much both classes rely and depend on each other in regular matches of TF2. What started with minor jokes, artwork, machinima, and even fanfiction eventually became the accepted norm to the point where even Valve themselves have officially recognized their bromance as canon, going so far as to focus an entire Meet the Team video around the subject while providing some interesting insight into how it all began. Number 2 Now we've already mentioned bitter rivalries, close relationships, and even bromances, so what's the next logical step? Well, one subject we haven't quite touched on yet is family relationships, and more specifically, the close bonds a dire situation present in the likes of Half-Life 2 can bring a father-daughter duo like Eli Vance and Alex Vance. Valve paid special attention to this relationship throughout Half-Life 2 and the sequel episodes, allowing the player to immediately identify and relate to the strong, close family connection present, even if the duo are only really seen together a handful of times. Both Eli and Alex clearly care for one another, a bond which is enhanced once you take a closer look at the history of the Vance family. 
With the death of Alex's mother Azian at Black Mesa, the importance of Eli's role as a parental figure was most likely significantly intensified, especially given the harsh childhood Alex must have had to endure during the Combine's early reign over Earth. This strong, relatable, and eventually heartbreaking bond is what brings the father-daughter relationship between Eli and Alex all the way up to number two on our list. Don't! Dad, look out! No! Dad! Dad! God damn it, let go of him! Number one. Now, what could possibly be Eli and Alex? Well, how about what we feel is the most interesting and complex entry on the list? The three-way rivalry and part-time partnership between Shell, Wheatley, and GLaDOS from Portal and Portal 2 is so important and effective it quite literally stands as the main pillar for the entire series. It can easily be argued the majority of the serious incidents and subsequent consequences from both Portal and Portal 2 happen as the explosive result of GLaDOS's overly controlling nature, Wheatley's idiocy and incompetence, or Shell's stubborn tenacity. While we might have penalized the relationship between Alex Vance and Gordon Freeman as being largely one-sided and therefore slightly underdeveloped, the same cannot really be said of Shell, Wheatley, and GLaDOS, despite the Portal series using the same silent protagonist technique as its older brother Half-Life. In Portal 2, at least, Shell actually stands as both a middleman and the vital third wheel within the world's strangest and potentially most dangerous love-hate triangle. While Portal showed it's definitely possible for the relationship to survive with only two of the three components, it's hard to deny the character relations within the series were dramatically enhanced with Portal 2 after the welcome arrival of Wheatley, who successfully manages to mix up the pre-established rivalry between GLaDOS and Shell just enough to totally flip things on their heads. The complex and unpredictable nature of this three-way rivalry managed to keep us extremely interested and entertained for the entire length of Portal 2, bringing it all the way to number one on our list. Now, now who's a moron? Could a moron punch you into this pit? Ah! Could a moron do that? Uh oh. And there you have it, our personal top five greatest relationships from Valve's game library. Don't forget to post your own thoughts and opinions in the comments below to let us know if you agree or disagree with our list. Be sure to check out older episodes of Valve Time Top 5, and to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch new episodes the moment they're released. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.